Hi, Ince. We've been discussing enterprise architecture, and I understand you use the five C's as a mnemonic. Can you tell me more about the five C's of enterprise architecture? Yes, the five C's. Uh, it, it's something um, I picked up um, um, on my work I've done over the years, and uh, the things I revisited, the themes, and uh, ultimately I found about five words starting with C, uh, which really makes sense, and, and that's the mnemonic I, I use to remind myself, and it's something I would like to share. So, the first one is composition. Composition is about the right elements or parts of a solution. It's about um, getting the scope right and as such uh, inform the project manager, as well as it details the work for the experts which need to be carried out. That can be code changes, it can be hardware to be installed, or can be users to be trained or, or role descriptions to be changed. So Heinz, what, what you're telling me is that the first C, composition, is about what's inside your project, inside the, the contents of it. Yes, it's, it's basically around what's in scope. Okay, what's next? Well, the next one is context. And when composition was looking into the box, um, context is more around a black box view of things. Um, and it uh, addresses matters which are just beyond the scope of a solution, such as an interface to another system. The project itself might not change the other system, um, but the other system needs to know if, if something in the, in the interface between the solution and focus and the other solution changes. So it's about um, informing the, the environment of the solution to keep the lights on. So Heinz, from my point of view, I, I typically be thinking about APIs for talking to other systems and things like that. So that's an example of context. That's one example for context. It can also be uh, uh, the way um, um, users communicate with each other around the solution, if you, if you consider the solution being a business process as well. Yes, and the next C is construction. So, so if we know everything from composition, what's inside the solution, and everything else which needs to change around the solution, then we need to, to look of, of uh, what needs to be done to, to get there, to, to, the, to the to be picture of architecture. And there are a lot of activities and tasks which are not reflected necessarily in the to-be architecture, such as data cleansing, data migration, or the different types of testing or, or training as well. Again, the construction informs the project manager about the sequence of uh, um, um, tasks and activities and their priorities of how they being, have to be carried out. So if I could perhaps argue slightly, um, in some ways, this might be felt like it's the realm of the lead engineer, um, but but I guess you're 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 still guiding them. It, you're not telling them precisely how to do their job. It's more of a sort of like saying, well, these are the things you're going to have to do. Yes, yes, uh, that's absolutely correct. And um, the solution architect just seem as a sort of a facilitator to go to to different lead architects in a in a bigger solution to relay this uh, information to the project manager in a, in a consistent and, and coherent way. And now we're coming to something which is a little bit more difficult to explain, which is comparability. And comparability is, is about uh, how we model and describe a solution architecture. And it's about how we actually share this, this information with other architects, with project managers, uh, with, with uh, lead engineers or developers. So it's about um, how to model and describe a solution architecture. It's, it's about document structures. It's about diagram types on, and modeling symbols. I've seen it far too often that um, you have different diagram types in, in solution designs, which, which are very difficult to understand in a fair bit amount of time. Uh, if you review a document like that, is spent on, on actually understanding what the document is actually trying to say, which what the story is going to tell. Um, so so the, the advantage of comparability and the outcome would be that it's easy, easily digestible by other experts, managers or architects. So can, can I make a guess here? Uh, if you were, say, following a, a standard like TOGAF, that might be trying to help with comparability here by providing a standard set. But it, you're not saying you have to go and follow their somebody else's uh, system of diagrams so long as you're you 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 have sets that are easily understandable by everybody yes and then Togov actually addresses that 
uh, in the uh, with the term viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So it's a standard layout of a diagram and a standard way of diagramming some specific concerns a stakeholder has. So yes, the last one is consistency, and that not it's not about um, me and my colleagues or my peers. It's about myself. It's uh, it's that I need to understand or I need to, to make sure that all the four C's which I've done previously do not happen in a sequence. Um, you do them concurrently, you, you revis revisit them. You might actually do com context before comparability and so on, but you always have to revisit things. If you change one of the four C's, you have to change the other three as, as well. So this is more around um, making sure that the whole, the whole solution design is consistent. And that's especially important in later stages of a project um, because uh, a small change can act like a stone thrown into a pond. A small pebble can cause many ripples. And as a solution architect, you need to cover that. That's very interesting. So I, I've, I've talked to in the past about key design decisions and it's no point writing something down as part of your architecture only for it to become out of date a, a month or so later. You have to update those decision documents with anything new so that your whole architecture is consistent. So thank you for your attention. I hope it helped you actually um, um, maybe um, not understanding because I, I think people who, who, who watch this video do understand what they're doing but to get it in a different perspective and then it hope, hopefully inspired some of, of, of the people look, uh, watching this video. Thanks very much, Heinz. If nothing else, uh, people can come up with their own five C's to make sure that they've got almost like a checklist of things to remind themselves of anytime they're doing enterprise architecture.